Have you ever considered that we are living in a unique time, that something world-changing is about to happen, and that it might concern you? If so, you're in the right place. Keep listening, and you'll hear thought-provoking views behind the news that point to a new and better future for all. Many people now sense that humanity is not alone. So consider this. If the Christ or the Buddha walked among us today as modern men, would we recognize them? What would they be saying? And most importantly, would we listen? Every Sunday on this program, Share International Radio will examine extraordinary events that are unfolding behind the headline news. This may be the message of hope you've been waiting for. And now, welcome to this week's show. Hello. This is Francis Omen welcoming everybody to the show. And this week we have a very interesting guest who I'm about to add on to the show. So let me see here. Um, we want to add Marsha Kimmel. She is... Um, Hold on a sec here. There she is. Welcome, Marsha. This is not a familiar voice that you've heard as the uh, host for this show. I'm Frances Oman, and I am generally the producer behind the scenes. And today, our hosts that usually do the show, Silito Pasquale and Diana Goldholland, have asked me to come out in front and talk today about skepticism. This is a wonderful topic for what we bring you on this show because we talk about things that many people are very skeptical about. In fact, we have such a basket of things that seemingly are unrelated that the skepticism can really grow. I invite you to bring your skepticism and to bring your open mind as well. I've documented quite a few of the events that we're going to be talking about on this show. And as a journalist, I always have to check all my facts. But don't believe me. Just See if you can explore some of the possibilities with us today. So, fasten your seatbelts. What if crop circles, UFOs, the rising voice of the people demonstrating all across the world are specifically and directly related to one dramatic event? It's about to come to a head just in time to help us rebuild a world that works for everyone. Share International Magazine inspired us to start this radio show, and Share International Magazine asserts that we are not alone, we have never been alone, that through the eons, great spiritual teachers have emerged to give humanity its lesson in the evolution of consciousness. Actually, all of the great teachers that have started, or that, whose followers have started religions, to be more exact, are all members of the same brotherhood. And for eons, they've overseen our evolution of consciousness. They've inspired some of our greatest men and women, Gandhi, Madame Curie, Martin Luther King, Joan of Arc, artists, musicians, Leonardo da Vinci, and Mozart, and those people have inspired us. It's interesting, you know, in this day of conflict, people see the different religions on the surface and in the news as conflicting with one another. But actually, if you study what's called the ageless wisdom teachings, which came out of Tibet and underpin all of the great religions with all of the similar truths that they teach, the ageless wisdom teachings 
state that at each shift of consciousness of humanity, another great teacher comes into the world. So Confucius, uh, Buddha, Jesus, Muhammad, all of these people bringing teachings that shift us and help shift us into another paradigm of consciousness. And we are right on the cusp of this happening. In fact, we're past the cusp. It is happening. Gautama Buddha actually said that at a time of tremendous crisis in the world, a new Buddha like himself would come into the world and help humanity create a new golden age that fulfills on the ideals of the various other religions. It's happening. The information I'm talking about has come from an artist and author by the name of Benjamin Krim. Three decades ago, Benjamin Krim began saying that the time had come for the new teacher for the age of Aquarius, not a spiritual teacher, not someone to start a new religion, but coming in with other great masters as a group, coming in to help guide us and see conflict is not necessary. Competition is not necessary. Benjamin Cram is an amazing man. People have said, oh, come on, you've been saying this for 30 years, it never happens. Well, Maitreya has come into the world. Gautama Buddha told us that his name would be Maitreya. And indeed, that is the name of this great teacher. All the different religions expect their own teacher. But actually, all of these great teachers are coming together now to work with us through resolving the climate crisis, the hunger situation, and the fact that we have war. You can always go to the SHARE International website. It's SHARE, S-H-A-R-E, dash international dot O-R-G to find free book downloads and videos and all kinds of much more specific background information on this whole subject. And we won't have a chance on this show to get to a whole lot of it. But as you can see already, the subject of skepticism is unrolling before us today. So our guest today is someone that I would call a thoughtful skeptic. Marsha Kimmel has been a colleague of mine here in the San Francisco Bay Area for decades. We've done production work together. And she is um, the um, director of the Next Stage Theater, which is Transformational Theater. And I have seen her work with amazing situations of conflict and people that were in very, very difficult situations and assist them through art, through the theater, to transform their experience into something that makes a huge contribution to the world. Marsha, welcome. Hi. Hi, Francis. It's so nice to be here. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm particularly interested in delving right in because you were raised in a Jewish family and... Um, just tell us, what's the background? I mean, I've known so many different Jewish people. Not a whole lot of them are, are, are you know, devout. Um, but I, I don't think I've ever met a Jewish person that didn't say they were Jewish. So there's a lot of pride and there's a lot of history. How was the Jewish view of Messiah in your, as you were growing up? And, you know, we're looking at that today. Tell us your experience. I am very proud to be Jewish, but I'm not devout and I'm not religious. I'm just, uh, I'm more culturally Jewish than anything, but I'm really glad that I was raised Jewish because it gave me a philosophy or a way of looking at the world philosophically and 
uh, as a questioner, as a searcher for truth, for, uh, for looking at other people's ideas and always being open-minded to it uh, so that I don't have the truth. I'm just interested in what other people are thinking and what other teachers are offering and taking from wherever, uh, wherever I'm, I'm getting information that seems to work. Did your family, did your family talk about Messiah or did, did other Jewish people that you know, um, just take for granted that, um, the great rabbi, I've heard you refer to Jesus as the world's greatest rabbi, Yes, (laughs) that, that they did not recognize him as the Messiah or what did, what were you hearing as you grew up? Well, when I was growing up, the people who were Christian and the people who were Jewish were perceived by my family and just about everybody as, as, as really separate, as different and, and not compatible. But the fact is, is that we're part of the same, we're, we're branches from the same tree. We're, we all come from that sense of there's a oneness, uh, that God is a oneness and that there's a unity uh, that, uh, that unifies the entire the entire universe. So the idea of, of the Messiah was introduced to me by a particular rabbi when I was about 13 years old, which is when I would have been given a bat mitzvah, but I wasn't given a bat mitzvah. I, I got this information from a rabbi that really opened my mind to the idea of Messiah. Shall I tell you the story? <laughs> I can't wait. Okay. Well, uh, this is uh, Dr. Mann, a rabbi in Chicago uh, at Temple Sinai, who was saying, you know, that... Oh, so, Marsha, we're, we're, we're about to have a break, but stay tuned, everybody, because she has a very interesting story to tell. Okay. Come right back as soon as we're done here. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Share International Magazine is unique in the world today. It draws connections that make sense between headline news and spiritual changes unfolding now on a global scale and explains the forces driving those changes. It may be the message of hope you have been waiting for. Investigate for yourself at shareontheairradio.org. That's shareontheairradio.org. Shareontheairradio.org. Vibe Nation Radio is brought to you by Carrie Turcott and Dean Thomas. Each week we bring a refreshing outlook to lifting the veils of illusion that occur in our daily lives. We will share our own learnings and personal experience that allow others to understand who they truly are. At the end of each show, Carrie will be tapping into the listeners' energies just to give an idea of what to expect for the week ahead. So join us each Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern and together we will discover the inner keys that will unlock the true you. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Dr. Kevin here. And I want to invite you every Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, to join me on The Dr. Kevin Show, where we have a diversity of guests who help you step outside the box, behind the curtain, and see what a load of crap is going on in the world today, so you have more information with which to make better decisions. We'll see you there. Namaste. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back, everybody. We are thrilled to have with us theater artist Marsha Kimmel, who is comes to into her life at the age of 13 in a Jewish family, and she is about to tell us how she found out 
and chose a view of the Messiah for herself. Marcia, tell yes. us your story. Yes, well, so Dr. Mann was uh, uh, talking to the congregation in Chicago, and he said, you know, the Messiah is an ancient Hebrew idea that, that someday someone will come and save us all. And he said, you know, we've really had messiahs. We've had Jesus, we've had Muhammad, we've had Buddha, we've had all kinds of wonderful people who have come into the world and given us all kinds of truth. And still, here we are, we're still a mess. So he said, perhaps, just perhaps, I'd like you to to consider that instead of it being a man who's going to come someday, perhaps the Messiah is an age, or the Messianic age, as he said, in which all of us humans will get it. We will get that we are part of God, that we have the consciousness that all these great teachers have given us, but we were continuing to feel that God was out there, someone else, and we are just poor humans that are flawed, and of course, we can't be expected to do anything other than screw up, right? But we're still human, and we will always be human. And Rabbi Mann was saying that perhaps when enough people embody the truths that the Messiah has brought, that we will live in a time when, when those, those values are are raised above all else and that we live in a, in a time when people are, are loved and are loved and are, are living in that paradigm. And that made sense to me. So that was my bat mitzvah. That was my, my <laughs> beginning of being, a, uh, in my own way, a Jewish woman. And that's really what I live by. So when I met you, Francis, and you talked to me about Maitreya and this coming, uh, I had a very skeptical idea about that but because I don't know if I do or I don't I I don't I don't necessarily believe or not believe unless I see or experience something myself I just don't believe that's just who I am I am a skeptic in that way but I'm open minded so I was open minded to the ideas that you put forth about that you said that Maitreya was teaching because they really 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 made sense to me so I hope it's true I hope it is true that he is here because we need all the teachers we could get. And a rabbi really is uh, a teacher. That's what rabbi means. So, Marsha, um, because you work in a theater with um, serious issue-based improvisational theater and with ensemble, and watching you uh, at work, it seems to me that your work is like a metaphor for what Maitreya is really up to uh. is 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 sharing that openness, the safety, the trust, the um, um, considering that we're all connected. Mm. And I know the challenges for this planet are tremendous, and so many people will tell me, "Well, Maitreya's, you know, vision. It sounds good. It sounds terrific. But you know, there's no way we're going to do it." There is no way we're going to do it. And frankly, if I didn't know Maitreya was in the world to assist and guide us in Mm -hmm. through these solutions, I think I might be very, very depressed. But I could see what it is that you do with Ensemble. Maybe you could, uh, Marsha and I both, but Marsha in particular now is working very intensely with incarcerated young men, if you can imagine. And, um, what are you seeing in the way that you work with them? And tell us a little bit about yes and and I don't, whatever whatever comes to mind that we can see as kind of a doorway into how humanity can resolve what's happening. Well, because my work is focused primarily in improvisation, and it, I, I do uh, improvisational theater work that is not particularly aimed at making jokes or being funny. I mean, we can be very humorous, but it's not, a, we're not doing it for that purpose. Whereas a lot of improv is, is aimed at, at just being funny. We're looking at being in the present and letting something come to us, a, our source of inspiration coming through us in the moment. And because we're working as a group, and this is the part that I think that you're, that you're asking me to speak to, is that 
we have to work with the individual egos going on at the same time. We're all in the same scene together, the same ensemble, or the same team on stage. And if, if we're trying to just make ourselves look good at the expense of a partner, it doesn't work. Well, but you're working with these bad boys, so to speak. Yeah. And by the way, um, uh, Maitreya does a lot of work with um, troubled youth. Oh. and um, So go ahead. Well, there's a principle that I teach, and it's called the agreement game, or uh, the principle of yes and. So the idea is that when, when, you, when someone in a, in a scene or in an improvisation puts forth an idea, or it, it might be at a meeting, Someone puts out an idea and says, well, I think it would be great to do blah, 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 blah. And the whole group goes, eh, I don't know about that. Well, we did that last year and it didn't work. Well, yeah, but I don't like it. I mean, what happens to the idea and what happens to the person? Oh, usually the I think there's two kind of responses usually, which is either people just stop trying to offer something or then they argue for their position. Right. So it, it, the, the egos perk up and they have to go to bat and go to go to war basically for their idea or they just retreat become passive and they and they think to themselves well i'm not going to put out my ideas to these jerks they don't listen to me but these kids are really hard to work with i mean i well, just let me let me let me go let me just give you this underpinning of this how this idea works sure. in improvisation and then i can talk to you more about how i'm dealing with with the kids at, at uh, uh, that I'm working with at uh, Overcomers with Hope in the in the video uh, program there, but when you're when you're doing an improvisation, you have to say yes to any idea that is put forth. Now we're talking about ideas. I'm not talking about uh, when you're actually deciding what is going to be practical to do. That's another part. That's another stage in the process. But just to get the ideas flowing, you have to say yes to every idea that comes up. You may not want the idea. You might not like the idea. You might disagree with the idea. But you say, yes, and here's another idea. Okay? So if I had a, I had a kid from Vietnam who would just kill everybody in, in every performance or every, every theater game, he would just, everybody would die. And then we learned as a group to say, yes, and everybody woke up again. And so he could have... He wasn't being made wrong for that choice. That choice was coming from a very unfortunate, sick place. But as he was listened to and heard and not put down and not, not excluded because it wasn't what people liked, he was still accepted for it. He could then slowly let go of that having to be. He could start to look at maybe there's other ways to open things up or keep the flow of the scene going, which he really wanted, but he was just kind of like seeing how far he could go with death and get away with it. And he was still accepted. And that's the point is that unless you know you are loved and accepted as you are, you can't really be yourself. And being yourself, being authentic is really what improvisation is about. But improvisation is really like life. You know, life is an improvisation. We're improvising now. Wow. It's really interesting listening to you. I'm thinking of uh, meetings, nonprofit meetings, where everybody puts their two cents in and we should do it this way and we should do it that way. And um, it seems to me that you said there's sort of a rule to this yes and game so that people have to kind of agree to a ground rule. Yeah. I can't remember what you said about they have to – say that that if it turns out in the meeting that after all of the ideas have been put on the table um and someone still really kind of is a holdout how do, how does that ha how do you uh, deal with that well, i mean because i know you've worked i've you i know you've taken these games into corporations with right. some pretty straight businessmen and how how do they learn it are they open what do they do if there's a holdout or something so now you're talking about the consensual decision making of how do you how do you work consensually? How do you work collaboratively? How do you get everybody's ideas out there 
so that you can use them and not turn anybody's ideas away. That sounds sort of like democracy. Do you suppose we could create that somehow on this planet? (laughs) It ain't easy, but it's doable. We do every single improv company in the world has to learn to do this. And listen, think about it. Improv companies are filled with people who are really strange, unusual, iconoclastic, uh, eccentric people who are all working together and they can still work together. So isn't that what we want? Don't we want to maintain the individuality of all the wonderful different kinds of people that we have and be able to work together? Yes. Well, working with young people is so important. Um, When I first heard about this story, I grabbed up my camera and started doing a documentary and I went up um, into Berkeley on Telegraph Avenue, which is a famous haunt of both students and professors. And at that time, a relatively hippie-like people. Mm -hmm. And I was interviewing everybody and said, do you think it's possible? Is it possible that uh, the Messiah or someone like that could come back into the world? And if he did, what would he do? And I interviewed a young man who was probably 14 years old, something like that. And I, I asked him that question. And the thing about the young people is they get it. They, it's like they haven't ungotten it yet. Yeah. And this young man said, oh, well, he would just probably get all the leaders together in one room and then they would decide on on a plan. And the first thing they would do is get rid of nuclear power. <laughs> so I was like, hello, <laughs> it's time to turn the world over to the young people, I think. <laughs> I'm for that. Well, here we go. It's time for a bit of a break, but we'll be back after the break to look at some more exciting angles to our subject of skepticism. Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Every night, when the skies are clear, a remarkable event can be witnessed. A UFO the size of five football fields is moving through the skies just like a star. It pulses. It blinks. It changes color. This spacecraft appeared before as the Star of Bethlehem. Find out what it all means. Visit ShareOnTheAirRadio.org. That's ShareOnTheAirRadio.org. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. I'm Maggie Chula. And I'm Catherine Glass. And we're the Psychic Angel Channelers. Join us every week here on Ohm Times Radio for Angel Talk Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Have you been searching for a perspective beyond the mainstream? Check it out. Join your hosts, Yelito Pascual and Diana Gold Holland, on Share International Radio for thought provoking views behind the news. Sundays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, on Ohm Times Radio. You can also find us at shareontheairradio.org. This may be the message of hope you've been waiting for. The Real Conscious Connection, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM.
Welcome back, Marsha Kimmel. It's great having you on our show Thank today. You. Thank you. Yes, and um, I think you've uh, brought up some very interesting points that people can actually take away with them and try using. Uh, Marsha did this at my birthday party when I turned, well, 70. And it was amazing. Everybody said, you know, it's like all these different things happen. And instead of being like the uh, the um, incarcerated kids, everybody had inspiring things. And we, you know, we should, you know, I, I can't remember all of the details, but it was like we had, you know, in about 15 minutes, we had created a whole new world. And everybody in the room was very clear that a new paradigm was possible. I just wanted, before we... Uh, delve into more um, talk with Marsha Kimmel. I wanted to tell you that our Facebook page, you can go to it at Facebook, share on the air, radio, North America, and even just go to Facebook, share on the air, radio. And it's a Full of lots of information. It tells you what shows are coming up. It tells you um, all kinds of interesting information and can send you to the Share International main website, share-international.org. But the best thing about it is that with every single colorful post, there's also See More. And if you click the See More button, you will find that not only can you listen live, there's a link to listen live every Sunday at 1.03, but there's also the link to our archives. And on this airing, we've done more than 20 shows. By the time someone's listening to this show on demand, there will be a lot more. There are shows about UFOs. There's shows about the economy. There's shows about experts in the environment. There are shows from artists and creativity and how their own creativity has been enhanced. It's, it's really a, a very fertile situation. So be sure to go to our Facebook page while you're there. Like us. And um, I think at the, this moment, let's go back to Marsha Kimmel. She's a transformational theater artist um, with an eye to what's happening in the world. I know she recently uh, read a book that was pretty scary about all of the kind of hidden ag- agencies in the world. Um, and I know that in my own documentary making, the what I call the medical industrial complex mm-hmm. is just full of all kinds of corruption. But Marsha's hopeful right now. So I just wanted to ask you, Marsha, when when you were when I was at the beginning of the show going through all the background information and talking about UFOs and and um and I know you've mentioned them too, but how what how do you see does it look like any of these things are connected to each other? What do you think is happening in the world? And is there a difference between believing this information and then just being committed to to the possibility that it might be able to come into being? Is that faith? What what are you noticing? For myself, I just have to say that I I can't jump into believing in something. I just can't do that because I don't know. I can say, I don't know, but I have, and I leave it open. I don't believe it. I don't not believe it. I just am open to the possibility. And that's part of my training as an artist. At the same time, I recognize that there have been times in the history of the planet when there were major paradigm shifts. I mean, I wasn't there, but I do know that there was a time when people thought and understandably so, that the world was flat. It looked like it was flat. That was the experience. And how could anybody say that it was round? It doesn't look round. It looked like the the sun goes around us. We don't go around any sun. I mean, 
It was just a, a right. view of the world that that was what made sense at that time. So all of the consciousness and the levels of consciousness that humans have had throughout history are based on what they knew at the time. Well, we're going through a huge paradigm shift now. Just what what we're able to do technically is and technologically is so amazing. It's so so beyond the beyond, so much more than we ever thought we could do. But there's a responsibility that has to go along with that. Otherwise it's deadly. There's a there's a a, a responsibility of how do we use the powers that we have that are so godlike, that are that are really divine. But if we don't take it take not just take advantage of them and, and, and capitalize on them, but also make sure that we're taking care of the whole, since it is ourselves that we're taking care of. If so, we're part of that whole. So Maitreya several years ago said that the voice of the people would rise up so strongly that it would change governments and that it would lead to a true social democracy mm. in the world. And we do see increasing numbers of um, demonstrations ever since the Arab Spring. And um, I'm just wondering, though, we're also seeing a lot of demagoguery, and people have been uh, mentioning Hitler as some, you know, watch out for people who are going to, you know, make you do stuff. And even when I talk about Maitreya, a lot of people are scared yeah. because it's like, is he going to tell us what to do? Right. What, what do you see? Do you think the protesting is going to be enough? What, what well, do you if, th- it, if people don't rise up and speak up, then we have no one to blame but ourselves that, that these um, jerks are taking over the world. I mean, someone like a Donald Trump, who's, who's a, a clown, he's, 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 a, he's a con artist, is... I mean, he's, he may have some good points, but it, it doesn't take away from the fact that his his way of going about things is is so egocentric and so uh, geared to his own aggrandizement. I mean, if if there's a case of hubris, you know what hubris is. You know, it's it's uh, unmitigated uh, pride, self pride that is blinded to its own faults. We've had plenty of leaders like that. And if we don't rise up and say, we're not taking it anymore, then we have no one to blame but ourselves. And that's when, when, when I was, uh, I'm, I was always interested in how did people allow Hitler to rise up in Germany? They were just passive. They were just stupid. They were just, they didn't, they were in denial. I don't know, maybe all of those things, but it's, it's human to do those things. And I think we're doing it all over again. If we let the, the, the leadership that is trying to get in do so. So I I think it's very, very, very important that people do make their, their voices heard and are seen and heard in today's society. And we have to get together to do that. We need each other. But I do think that we're that we're going through a major paradigm shift, you know, that uh, and if we don't have some guidance, if we don't have master teachers that we can trust and listen to and not someone who's going to tell us what to do. And if you do what I say and I'm I've got the truth and if you do what I say, then you'll be saved. I'm sorry. I can't I can't buy into that. I have to I have to stay the center of my own consciousness and then use what comes to me from great teachers. I would be I would be a fool not to yeah. uh, take advantage of any good teaching that comes my way. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things is going to be uh, a definitive turning point is that um, Maitreya has been uh, appearing on television shows all across the world, oh. and at a certain point, when enough people have heard about him and it's and and are inspired by his message Uh something called the day of declaration is going to happen and that all of the satellites of that are up in the world will all be linked on that day and his message of sharing and justice and truth will come telepathically into the minds of all of humanity at the same time and at the same time there's going to be hundreds of thousands of miracle cures 
Now, I can really understand how someone could be skeptical about that. But as Benjamin Cram, who's British, would say, the proof is in the pudding. Yep. And I think that's going to be pretty tasty. So I just invite our listeners, you know, take a look. See what signs you're seeing that a big paradigm shift could could take place. Well, you also mentioned um, UFOs. And I have not seen any myself. I've seen the video of, of the, there were some lights over the Temple Mount in Jerusalem and several different people from, with several different phones. I mean, everybody's got a phone now with a, a camera in it. So we got pictures, at least I, I mean, it doesn't seem like the government is letting us know all of the facts that, that are going on. But the crop circles, I mean, I've seen pictures of those crop circles. They are amazing and they're real. It's not like someone could make that up. And it's beyond anything that humans could have just done overnight. It's just not possible for us to have done that. So it's obvious something's going on and it's being suppressed. The information is being suppressed by the governments of, of the world. They don't, I don't know why they don't want us to know, but it seems like it's coming out because you just can't keep it down. Well, actually, it. something about oil probably has a lot to do with it. In oh. my documentary work about medicine and alternative cancer cures, um, I was shocked that um, it was Rockefeller and the oil industry that started this group without that didn't even have doctors in it called the AMA to <laughs> because they saw a huge um, possibility of pharmaceuticals being made out of oil and um, you know the 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 fabulous people who provided the alternative cancer treatments that saved my life one of them was even mysteriously killed so you know there's a lot that you're talking as you're saying there's a lot of forces at be so we'll come back after the break and thank everybody for welcoming marcia kimmel transformational theater artist we'll talk to you soon stay tuned The future of Internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. The Awakening of Humanity by Benjamin Krem is a concise, prophetic book about momentous changes soon to occur. It focuses on an unprecedented event, the emergence into full public life of Maitreya, the world teacher. Download the book free online. Visit shareontheairradio.org. That's shareontheairradio.org. Share on the air radio.org. The truth is, you can't change the world if you're broke. I know, I tried. Isn't it time you turned your life's calling into a profitable, freedom based business? I'm Michelle Barr. Join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern for Sacred Success. Simone Millicis would like you to know that business can be fun, which is why she wrote the book Joy of Business. What if you could have the joy of business rather than the stress and struggle? Most of the time, the only thing stopping you from a thriving business is you. In the Joy of Business book, Simone gives you access consciousness tools and pragmatic ways to get out of your own way and to create the business, life, and living you know is possible and beyond what this reality says is achievable. Business is joy. It's creation. It's generative. It can be the adventure of living. You can purchase your copy of the book through Amazon or Joy of Business website, www.accessjoyofbusiness.com. Come heal yourself. What is healing? Healing is nothing but connecting with your all-knowing higher self that already has solutions to all your problems and is always there to guide you. Through this show, we help you to connect with that you are and tap into that innate potential you have to transform your life and fly high. Please join me, your host Monica Goyal, every Sunday, 7 p.m. Pacific. Namaste. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. 
Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us all the way through this show. It's been inspiring working with Marsha Kimmel for decades, and I have learned so much from her, and uh, I am delighted to have her input on this show about skepticism. I know when I first started telling people that I heard that Maitreya is in the world, that that it's it's the same as the returning of Christ and Buddha and and the Kalki Avatar and Krishna and the Imam Mahdi and all the religions all expect the same guy and he's here and and boy did I did I I just figured if they heard that everybody would be really happy and they would say um, wow um, that's great but no <laughs> they certainly didn't I got. Uh, quite a wagon full of skepticism, and I just wanted to thank you, Marsha, for having such a marvelous open mind, so open that I noticed when you arrived today, you um, had a Share International magazine <laughs> lying on the seat of your car, and so yeah. that really, really touched me, and I wanted to take the opportunity to say a little bit about Share International magazine. It's an extraordinary magazine. I'm the daughter of a pub- of a magazine publisher, and so I know about it. And I know that in my life growing up, we lived from issue to issue because our livelihood depended upon the ads. Whether I got a pair of shoes at the beginning of school or a new dress depended on whether we had enough ads in the in the magazine. Well, Share International magazine doesn't have any ads. It never has. Even everything that all of the co-workers all over the world, thousands of us who are volunteering in a loose network, we don't have officers, no one is paid. Even Benjamin Krem, who's been doing this full time for over 30 years, has not taken a single cent. And the Share International magazine um, doesn't have any ads, and... Even the printer contributes everything. The only thing we pay for is the ink and the paper. So um, it, it's beautiful. And on the cover of every issue, there's a, there's a reprint of one of Benjamin Krem's amazing paintings. These are like, they're mandalas, not necessarily round. They're, they're square or rectangular with marvelous imagery. I mean, he studied with people like Clay, and it's just, but these are paintings that are experiences of his meditation and and his master, actually, who has uh, moment-to-moment telepathic rapport with him, works with him on these paintings, and these paintings are then a window to us. So if you're meditating, if you get hold of a Share International hard copy. If you meditate and you look at these paintings by Benjamin Krem, they're very inspirational and really assist with with your own personal meditation. Um, so people contribute um, uh, and there's articles about things that you just don't hear about. There's articles about in the developing world all of these things that are being put in place. So as the institutions that are so rotten are shooting themselves in the foot, are crumbling, a whole network of viable, cooperative um, business that really serves the people and um, are growing up. And there's articles about that, trends. There's um, uh, articles on... The latest um, UFOs. Did you know that NASA has photographs focused on the sun 24-7? They block out the sun with a little circular mask because otherwise it would wipe out the rest of the image. But over the past many months, there keep being enormous, I mean, they look, they don't look enormous, but NASA has been taking photographs of many UFOs. They are not commenting about it, but they're coming from NASA's Solar Heliospheric Observatory, and we always publish them in Share International. Um, Some of them look like gigantic 
angels, the, the typical shape of an angel that people think of, you know, when you think of like angels with wings, but, but they're the size of, you know, like three times the size of planet earth. They dwarf the, the look of the stars in the background. Anyway, it's just fascinating. Um, so Marsha was talking about suppression of information um, it's sort of hard to suppress NASA photographs. So anyway, um, and on the back of every issue, there's beautiful photographs that have been taken, usually from the third world. And on the back of the issue that just came out for um, uh, this month, for March 2016, there's a marvelous quote from... Uh, a powerful article that Benjamin Krems Master wrote. So I'm just going to read you a little bit of it because it's quite inspiring. And um, I want before I, before I read the quote, I wanted to make sure that all of you know that you can email us if you have a question. You can either leave a message on our Facebook pair page, share on the air radio, North America. Or you can email us at info at shareontheairradio.org. So I just wanted to read this inspiring quote about Maitreya from Benjamin Krems Master. By the way, every issue of Share International Magazine has an article from one of the most evolved masters that's ever been on the planet. There's no other place that contains anything like that. So let me read this to you. It'll give you a kind of an a, another experience of what the world might be like when Maitreya suggests the things that he will be suggesting about cooperation and sharing and what we might be able to create in this world. Quote, Maitreya will emphasize the utter necessity for peace and that the complete renunciation of war can only be achieved by trust, sharing alone, Maitreya will affirm, can engender that trust. Thus will Maitreya speak, thus will he foster the sense of one humanity and the need for sharing. Needless to say, not all men will respond to Maitreya's call for unity and brotherhood. But as the voice of reason and justice penetrates the hearts of men, more and yet more will see the truth of his insight and the necessity for change. Thus will it be, and thus will men awaken to the light of truth that is among them, and will see him as their leader and guide, gently yet firmly. He will coax men to act in their own highest interests. Like an elder brother, he will lead the younger members of his family step by step towards their own truth. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, it it brings to mind the things that you've been sharing about working uh, with Ensemble and with the agreement game, the yes and, and establishing trust as the basis for peaceful interactions amongst people and cooperation trust and respect mutual respect yes and i see when you're working with the um, incarcerated youth they they just they've so not been respected Mm -hmm. and they reflect it by being very disrespectful Mm -hmm. Uh, you guys Listeners would not believe how amazingly disrespectful they are for the first few weeks until Marsha starts working with them and building trust. And building trust. Yeah. Building trust. Yeah. So, um, are there any parting words that you'd like to leave our audience with? Um, we've got just uh, two or three more minutes, but I know that um, you have a positive feeling about what's happening in the world, but what evidence do you see of the possibility of what Maitreya is saying 
will come to be, that humanity will create a golden age. What do you see as evidence? Well, for one thing, I, I believe that we are in the middle of a renaissance and we don't know it yet. We would look back at this time and say, oh my gosh, look at all the art that's being created right now. Look at all the creativity. Look at all the people who are connecting in spite of it not being fostered by our society. I mean, it's hard to make a living as an artist, but still people are persevering and are determined to be the artist that they are because the artist in us is the creative the creative being and it's the most connected to the divine that's so great marcia actually next week we're going to have another artist on we've had oh. several and her name is ann finneran she's from new york she does she's an environmental activist and she's a student of the ageless wisdom teachings that i've been talking about and next week is all about easter and easter is not just a christian event. This is something that the great lamas and 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 uh, yogis in the East celebrate. The Ageless Wisdom talks about Easter as one of the most important and powerful full moon periods for meditation that ever happens in the world. So Silito will be back to interview Ann Finneran next week. She's going to talk about the major initiations of human evolution that are symbolized in the five stages of Jesus' life. So be sure to join us and thank you so much for being with us today. Namaste. Namaste.